On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are here in beautiful, sunny Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Oh wait, it's not, it's not that at all. It's, it's a snow covered mountain. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and today, like I said, we made it to Eureka Springs, but not without the Porsche fighting for its life. And it did so incredibly well. I can't tell you how impressed I am by this car. Three hours in just pure driving rain where you couldn't see anything, honestly. Like we could barely see the lines in front of our headlights. It was wild. You could feel the car kind of slipping around on the road a little bit. We've got people with us on like track tire setups. They were struggling out there in the wet, but the Porsche did great. I expected like the top might leak or the engine might ingest water. Like we, it was so bad out there. And instead it just went down the road like nothing was wrong at all. It even has rain sensing wipers, which blew my mind. I am so happy that it has nice amenities like that and heated seats. So everybody's happy. It just works great. So. We made it up here uh, through all the rain and right before we go to sleep, we look outside and lo and behold, two inches of snow sitting on the deck and it was coming down hard. So it started to melt now. Well, it makes sense because it's almost noon now. So we waited for the roads to clear a little bit. Obviously you can't go driving around these twisty canyon roads at um, speeds until the snow is off the road and you know the water starts to evaporate. So it's starting to warm up a little bit. It's 35 outside now. Let's get back out there and see how the Porsche does for a second day of, uh, well, well, so far, I, I wanted to say torture, but the car is just, it's rocking. What a great car. We've actually seen 911s slide across the road out here. And the Boxer, it just seems like you can't push it hard enough. It's just rewarding. It does exactly what I want every single time. It never lets me down. And luckily, once you're going like quickly enough, you can keep the car in third gear all the time. When you get into the really tight technical stuff, I hate its transmission. I can't tell you enough uh, how annoying it is because it's like second and you're right almost to the limiter in second and then third and then you don't get to make any power in third and you need to go back to second. And it's just this nonstop little battle of second, third. But once you're, you know, going reasonable speeds and the turns open up just a, just a hair, uh, it's perfect. So let's get after it. Now, this is not what you expect to wake up to when it's still the middle of November in Arkansas. Today we are here in my 2006 Porsche Boxster 987 and in the last few videos we've been fixing everything. We put in a new head unit, we got a road trip ready, the head unit's doing great, charging the phone, streaming the music, we fixed the top, we checked over this whole car, we did all the fluids on it and I gotta say it was worth it. So we got our crew here, we got a Prelude, a Lotus S4, Porsche GTS, and this track prepped Miata, and we are here at War Eagle. Obviously, we're up here for Porsche Palooza, having some fun, and it looks like we're all gonna pull over for a minute, I hope. We've got Rob's beautiful new GTS up here. Obviously, one of the cars I really love, a 911. That is free S4, you guys can actually check it out over there. Jay's crazy track prep Miata that is, I mean, that thing picks up so many rocks off the road and chucks them miles, so. I want to stay tight, but also I can't stay too tight. I already chipped the windshield a little bit. Just uh, one little tiny hole that I'll fix when I get back. We got the Boxster, of course. A classic Honda Prelude. I know everyone loves the Prelude, so that looks amazing. Another 911 behind that, Jake's. And that's it. That is our group for now. Obviously, uh, we got more people coming. They'll join us tomorrow, but for now, we're just out having some fun driving the cars. So let's go see this historic bridge. We're going over the amazing historic War Eagle Bridge right there. It's a one lane wooden bridge. Before we get too far into the trip, I gotta take a second to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Carly. Carly is a portable OBD2 diagnostic scanner you can carry with you anywhere. It's so small, it'll fit in your pocket. In fact, I carry it around all the time now, which is why I don't have the box to show you that anymore. But Carly works on iOS and Android. It's a simple app download. So Carly connects to your vehicle using its OBD2 port. It's usually right under your dash on the driver's side. It uses Bluetooth low energy to connect so it doesn't waste a bunch of power on your phone while you're using it. It provides manufacturer level diagnostics. You can look at live data. You can reset your service intervals. You can check the uh, odometer in the ECU instead of just the one in the cluster to see if somebody tried to roll back the mileage on a car that you wanna buy and on some vehicles, you can unlock hidden features with coding. You can add a ton of vehicles to Carly. You can see I've got my S4 in here, my Volt, my Ford, 
uh, my brother's work fan. I work on everything using this because it's always with me. Right here on the screen in Carly, you can see we have the health used car check and the other features where we can do coding and things like that. We're gonna jump into my F250 at the health side and hit check for issues. Another cool benefit you get with Carly is Smart Mechanic, which can help you diagnose issues and uh, troubleshoot them from there. So we found two issues with the truck. It's got one with the cruise control module and one with the accessory protocol interface module. Everything else looks like it's good to go. Uh, I've seen these issues on this truck since the day I bought it, so we're actually not going to mess with it. Carly's giving my subscribers 15% off using code WatchJRGO for a limited time, so hit the link in the description below and check them out today. Huge thank you to Carly for sponsoring today's video and being a continued supporter of automotive creators like me. Now, back to the trip. You can hear the sounds of the Turbo Esprit. It sounds cool, that's for sure. So this is an old mill right in the middle of the river. I don't know if you guys can hear me over the Esprit because it is loud. But there's a water wheel on this mill and it's, it's freaking cool. We're going exploring. I don't think you guys can even hear over the water, but that is awesome. Never been this close before. Here's the belt rod coming through the floor from the water wheels. As you can see, it's got a big clutch system right there to hit the other belts so they can run what looks like their flower driver over there. Water powered. So there's your historic bridge for the day. Always cool to see that thing. Who doesn't love an old mill with a water wheel on it? The old school technology. That was a lot of fun. We went back and stopped at the War Eagle Mill. Something I've been through here probably 30 different times on rallies and car trips. That mill has never been open and today it was open and we got to go check it out and see a bunch of cool stuff like the water wheel uh, drive system inside. So back on the road and ready to rip it. And uh, can't wait to have some fun. We just came that way, and I think it took, I don't even know, it took a while. We were following a Ford Fusion or something last time, and they were going. They were like doing 50, but we just got back in half the time. <laughs> Good times. This is the Little Golden Gate Bridge. I don't know why this is a tour of Eureka Springs, but this is actually pretty cool. It's like a mini model of the Golden Gate Bridge, so it's pretty cool. One lane wooden bridge. Oh, this is how we came in last night. A whole day of switchbacks, hairpins, tearing it up in the hills, and the Boxster has never flinched. We're talking like the tack stays straight up and down at 4,000 RPM, which is something I love about Porsches. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it, but when you're actually driving Porsches, they put the power band somehow at 4,000 RPM. So right there, you've got room to move up, room to move down, whichever shift you need and the needle is straight up and down so at a glance you know where the engine's at so just like this there's second gear <laughs> ah, i love this car oh anyway we're almost back to eureka springs which means it's time for us to go get some dinner with the group everybody's got to recover from driving all day and uh, you guys have to see some videos Views out here are incredible. Anyway, a nine thousand dollar Boxster out here keeping up with uh, hundred thousand dollar nine elevens, two hundred thousand. I guess at this point, what? There, there's four hundred thousand dollar nine elevens, and this thing will keep up with them for the most part. In the straights, I have literally nothing, but in the corners, Boxster. so much fun! What 
it says crooked and steep, it's time to have some fun. We've got a row of Porsches here. Get ready to roll through a <laughs> drive through zoo. Maybe the worst idea ever. Look at this Carrera RS. There's more 930s, turbos, and stuff like that over there. I guess I don't really need my seatbelt in case we get attacked during this mission. This is going to be an experience. I've never done a drive through petting zoo. Also, I think this may be one of the, one of the few in the world. So, we're going to have some fun. This lady behind us was already, she's, she's right back there staring at all the Porsches. She's like, were those your cars? Whatever you do, take the road that says petting zoo and not see any crowd. It's terrible. <laughs> I was like, ma'am, this is a Boxster. Sir, this is a Wendy's. All right, here we go. Stay in your car. Windows open two inches only. Interesting. Interesting. Wow, that cattle guard is intense. Today we've learned you do not need a safari Porsche to go on a safari. A stock one will do just fine. I know Porsche's about to release a, a $300,000 Dakar ready car, but you could just go grab a Boxster and probably work. Oh, good boy. I would be scared to death with this many antlers around my car. <laughs> oh gosh, you aggressive. These must be the world's luckiest animals. Cars literally drive food to them. <laughs> Not something you see every day. Full on buffalo. You don't like your food? Our food? <laughs> All right, the lady said we will never make it if we go this way. But like I said, this is a Boxster, and we're absolutely going this way until we get stuck. You'll never make it through this. There's gravel and also rocks. Oh, no. Torture testing the Boxster has been a rousing success. Uh, I mean, ripping through the corners, off-roading in a petting zoo. We went through the forbidden scenic loop and it had literally zero issues with it. Not even a, a hint of tire slip. So it off-roads pretty well. It on-roads very well. It survived pouring, driving rain that I, I was sure the top and the windows were going to leak. But nothing leaked. I think some of that might have been due to me fixing the... Uh, the side of the top right before we left. And of course, snow, freezing temperatures, the cooling system hasn't had any issues. What a car. Anyway, all we have left is getting the Boxster back home. We've got about 600 miles on it so far just in this trip. I'm really hoping to see uh, right at the 195,000 mile mark before we get back. Uh, just uh, me putting an extra 1,000 and change on it would be pretty cool. So far, so good. Torture test passed with flying colors. And as long as it makes the drive home without stranding me, I'm just going to love this car. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchchairgo.com for cool shirts, not like this. Again, huge thank you to Carly for sponsoring the video. Link in the description below. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. It's too cold. Very cold. It's too cold for this. <laughs> we finally drive a car on the channel. I don't do this very often because apparently you guys don't watch it. So if you guys watch this video, I guess we'll do it some more.